Today on BRSTV Investigates, do you want to master your tank lighting using the MaxSpec Razor X? We show you how to master the spread, spectrum, and par of the MaxSpec Razor X 100, 200, and 300 watt LED fixtures and share exactly how we would use these reef lighting tools for the right job. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates where we experiment on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And today we show you how to master these MaxSpec Razor X LED fixtures with a series of tests that provide you with direct BRS recommendations aimed at optimizing their spread, spectrum, and par so that you know how to exactly use them for the best performance. In today's video, you'll learn how to master the MaxSpec Razor X's spread spectrum and par using the 100 watt for a two foot by two foot tank filled with LPS and softies, the 200 watt for LPS softies and polyp four foot tanks, and we'll also find out if the 47 inch Razor X 300 watt fixture is the right tool for creating a wall to wall dominated SPS system on a four foot tank, or if it serves a better purpose. Not only that, but there's some very surprising results that we tested in terms of the MaxSpec Razor X's spectrum that we haven't seen across the dozen or more LED lights we tested so far, so let's get started. That first lighting component we're mastering today is the spread because up front, it's important to identify how many of these you'll need for specific tank goals and also what we can expect from the Razor's lens design and spread capabilities to figure out how best to use a tool like this over your own tank, meaning how high will you mount the lights to achieve the optimal spread inside your tank to light it from edge to edge as evenly as possible. Getting to that first aspect and deciding how many MaxSpec razors it will take to get the job done, this one is easy since there are four Razor X options to choose from, and based on the mounting height and PAR data that you'll see in just a moment, our recommendation for a 24 inch by 24 inch 60 gallon tank like this is to use a single 100 watt Razor X for those tanks filled with medium to lower light demand corals like LPS, softies, and polyps. If you're looking to use a MaxSpec Razor X in this same tank to achieve those wall to wall dominated SPS tanks, we found that LEDs in this 90 to 150 watt range just don't pack the power to reach our PAR goals. So if SPS dominated were your goal in a similar 60 gallon tank, we'd recommend choosing a better tool, better fitted for that, achieving that. However, for LPS softies in our 120 gallon four foot tank example, we recommend using a single 200 watt Razor X. And the data we share next will show you exactly why we consider a single 300 watt Razor X to be the right tool for a mixed tank with some well-placed SPS at the top and other lower light demand corals near the middle and bottom in that same four foot by two foot area. Probably the most important aspect of mastering spread for the lighting options we choose to hang over the tank is mounting height because it provides us with a window into what type of light we have, whether it's a concentrated spotlight, soft floodlight, or large panel diffuse style light. It allows us to make smarter decisions about how to achieve the optimal spread that we're looking for. To determine what light type the MaxSpec Razor X is and how we will master mounting height with it, we start with the light mounted at six inches above the water surface and measure 36 PAR data points in a grid at six inches deep in the tank. We then raise the light one inch at a time, testing the same 36 points along the way until we find an optimal mounting height where we've reduced any hotspot in the center directly under the light while also increasing the PAR in the outer edges of the tank. However, we stop the test when we see 15% or more of the light efficiency lost to spill outside into the surrounding area. Starting first on our 60 gallon two foot by two foot tank using the 100 watt Razor X with all channels set to 100% and mounted at six inches off the top of the water, which is about the same that you would get with the included mounting legs, we see a 589 center hotspot, 121 in the outer edges, giving us a total overall average par of 246. Seeing how quickly that par drops from the five to 600 range to the 40s and 60s, just a few inches away from the center, it's easier to understand why we will need to raise the light up significantly higher to achieve the spread that we're looking for. With that in mind, we continue to test inch by inch, and when we reach eight inches off the surface of the water, we find that center hotspot is now improved to 468, while also improving the spread in the outer edges to 141. At this height, we are only seeing a 7% loss of efficiency in overall average par, so we continue to test until we reach 10 inches. Here at 10 inches, the improvement in the center has lessened the hotspot by about 200 par to 378, and we've gained around 30 par in the outer edges to 152, 
but some parts in the tank are still two to three times lower than the center of the tank, so a decent performance, but not perfect. However, we've reached a 13% loss of efficiency to light spill, and it's here that we find our BRS recommended mounting height for the 100 watt Razor X. Next, we test the 200 watt Razor over our 120 gallon test tank with all channels set to 100% to verify if it also shares a similar optimal mounting height. And actually looking at the spread data at six inches off the top of the water versus the spread data for 10 inches, Although we've made gains in the outer edges by a little over 45 par and reduced the center by more than 200 par, there's only a 10% loss of efficiency in light spill, which means over this longer four foot tank using a smaller fixture, we can actually raise the 200 watt light a little higher to 12 inches. It's here at 12 inches off the water, we find that not only do we just about reach our 15% efficiency threshold, but we're also able to spread the light from the 200 watt four individual LED clusters in a way that reduces the center hotspot down to 381 and brings the outer edges up to 118 par, giving us more usable light throughout more of the four foot by two foot area. Again, some areas of the tank significantly brighter than the outside edges. However, at 599 bucks, this is the lowest cost way we've lighted a four foot tank so far, and I think it's a good value. For the 47 inch 300 watt Razor X, we followed the same procedure to verify mounting height, starting with six inches as a reference point next to 10 inches off the surface of the water. And we find that the six LED clusters in their fixed spacing configuration provides not only higher par directly underneath the fixture, but also provides higher par towards the outer edges where there's an improvement to the spread at 10 inches to 173 in the outer edges yet this time only a 12 percent reduction in overall total average par which allows us to raise the light higher by one more inch at 11 inches we find our brs recommended mounting height where we've smoothed out the center hotspot by 262 par to 493 and improved the outer spread to 187. so at our recommended mounting height of 11 inches the six spread out sources of light across this longer 300 watt fixture, again, is not perfect, but they also are better than any option that we've tested at this 899 price point that we've tested this year. That third aspect to mastering light spread is to master the spacing between multiple fixtures. In this case, that's not really an option because the light sources are in a fixed position and all of you will get pretty similar results. Looking at the PAR data, I think there are opportunities for them to space the pucks differently to get better spread performance, and maybe we'll see that in the future. Now that we've mastered the spread for the MaxBec Razor X, let's master Spectrum next, because the correct Spectrum will not only provide for the coral's energy needs and metabolic functions, but will also highlight and accentuate the coral's fluorescence, which is at the heart of creating a jaw-dropping tank. To master Spectrum, we look at the Razer X from three angles. First is what the Razer has to offer in Spectrum overall and what we can expect that to look like in our tanks. There are four adjustable color channels that make up the Razer Spectrum mix with a combined royal blue and cool white channel A that shows a prominent peak at 443 and a small shoulder in the green and yellow spectrum. Next is a royal blue and light blue channel B combination that creates a wide peak at 450 to 460 which is primarily where we'll see our corals peak fluorescence. Followed by channel C with a mix of deep blue and violet LEDs, which creates one of the widest offerings we've tested between 380 and 420 in that near UV range with a peak at 396. Lastly, channel D that combines deep red, cyan, and warm white LEDs for a spectrum mix with peaks at 662, 500 and a small hump around 440 and what we will use sparingly to bright up the tank for our eyes and reduce that heavy blue looking tank. Now that we know what the Razer has to offer in that spectrum range, we use those channels to create a BRS recommended spectrum ratio that strikes a balance between the spectrum offering and using the LEDs as efficiently as possible with an emphasis on creating a wide blue band spectrum between 400 and 500, where corals primarily draw their photosynthetic energy from, coupled with a bit of white to make the tank look good, 
then using our best judgment for the, all of the other channels. After testing multiple spectrum blends, both over a tank with our eye and using a spectrometer, we developed our BRS recommended spectrum ratio by setting channel A blues and whites to 80%, channel B royal blue and light blue, and channel C royal and violet to 100%, and channel D red, green, and warm white to 60%. When we compare this spectrum mix to the universally known ATI Blue Plus spectrum, we see that although the razor is slightly thinner in that violet 420 to deep blue 440 range, its prominent peak near 450 will most certainly result in showcasing the coral's fluorescence, specifically those nearly neon greens, yellows, and oranges. The most notable spectrum point to make here is that very strong peak of violet and near UV in the razor spectrum, which in most of the other lights that we test usually winds up getting overpowered by other channels, but in this case, that heavier amount of violet and near ultraviolet might actually showcase itself in the tank as additional accents and nuances in chloral fluorescence that wouldn't be as noticeable from other lights. So before we move into mastering PAR next with the Razer, let's wrap up Spectrum with our dynamic Spectrum test to see how well the Razer blends our recommended Spectrum mix that we just created into one even blend within our tanks. We took 10 Spectrum shots under our 60 gallon tank filled with water and a power head to break up the surface. And as you can see from the results, the individual LEDs that are housed in white reflectors, although they don't create the most cohesive blend of spectrum, but also performance that should be expected at this price point. Using those first two components of mastering your tank lighting of spread and spectrum, we now get to the heart of what it means to master the MaxSpec Razer X, where we combine the data and show you exactly how to set up your own 100, 200, or 300 watt Razer to meet the PAR goals for LPS and mixed tanks in tanks similar to our 60 cube and 120 gallon test tanks. That all begins with a 100 watt fixture mounted at the BRS recommended 10 inches over our 60 gallon cube, where our goal is to fill as much of the tank as possible from top to bottom in PAR ranges from 75 to 150, where those medium to lower light demand corals seem to thrive in. To achieve that, we used a scaled down version of our BRS recommended spectrum ratio with channel A set to 68%, channel B and C set to 85%, and channel D set to 51%, and took the 108 measurements across the depths of 6, 12, and 8 inches in the tank. Using these settings, we found 79 out of 108, or 73% of our entire 60 gallon cube at or within 75 to 150. So these are our BRS recommended settings for a 60 gallon cube slice of the ocean filled with LPS, softies and polyps. And if your tank is slightly smaller or larger, you can scale these intuitively into a safe window. We followed the same procedure for our four foot 120 gallon tank using the 200 watt razor with the same par goals in mind and mounted at the BRS recommended 12 inches off the top of the water using a scaled back version of our BRS recommended spectrum ratio to channel A set at 64%, B and C set to 80 and channel D at 48 where we tested 103 out of 198 data points or 52% of that same four foot tank in that 75 to 150 goal. So that is is about 18% short of where we'd like to be, but again, at 599 bucks, this is a pretty solid performance. However, if we're willing to use the light a little less efficiently, we were able to find a mounting height and intensity settings where we were able to reach 71% of our 120 gallon tank within that 75 to 150 par by raising the light to 18 inches above the water surface and setting channels A through D to 72, 90, 90, and 54 respectively, yet at a cost of 30% of light lost outside the tank. In that same frame of mind for the 300 watt Razor X mounted above our four foot test tank at the recommended 11 inches and the channel set to A at 80%, B and C at 100%, and D at 60%, we tested 89 out of 198 or 45% inside our SPS range of 200 to 350 par. Again, not what we're looking for for SPS dominated tanks, but this makes a really solid option for those mixed tanks where we intentionally want those high and low zones. What this solid mixed tank option looks like is at six inches deep in the tank, we found 29 out of 66 points in that 200 to 350 range. 12 inches deep, we find 37 out of 66, and 18 inches deep, 
23 out of 66 in that range, and you will absolutely be able to find many locations within the tank ideal for a wider variety of corals, which is the definition of a mixed tank, and this light will be a good tool for that purpose. So before we get into that recommendation of who this light is best designed for, I'd like to share that you can actually use this light to create an SPS dominated tank as well, if you're willing to turn all channels to 100%. This is outside the BRS recommended spectrum settings and not the color we would choose ourselves, but it can get the job done and achieve a total of 66% of our 198 test points within that target range of 200 to 350 from the top, middle, and bottom of the tank, and absolutely the lowest cost light that we've tested that can achieve that. So based on all the data that we collected today and selecting the right tool for your tank, I think the best application for this light is obviously LPS and mixed tanks. A couple of the most notable features are the increased UV and violet spectrum, onboard controls for those who don't want to use their phone, single fixture with one set of hanging brackets and one cord, easy setup, and all at one of the lowest price points out there. I think one of the interesting benefits of this lighting fixture over the others is for those reefing pioneers who want to test that theory that you can change or create coral fluorescence in some corals by targeting spectrum ranges in those high violet to near UV areas, which is something that the Razor X has shown to be able to do in higher ratios than what we've tested in other LEDs. This actually begs the question, what spectrum ranges do accent coral fluorescence and non-fluorescent colors in corals, and how exactly do we use LEDs to achieve them? This is something you can find out in Ryan's two-part series on mastering coral coloration right over here.